Today we're going to take a look at one of my favourite historical features left behind from Victoria's busy gold mining era, stamp battery foundations. I got a bit obsessed with stamp batteries over the last few years and I've been to check out a whole heap of them around western and northeastern Victoria. And one thing that I've noticed is that although there are a good amount of brilliant surviving stamp battery sites which remain in situ up in Victoria's high country, here in the Victorian Goldfields region there are not many survivors at all aside from a few which have been preserved within their sheds. Four out of six of Victoria's surviving state gold batteries are located within the Victorian Goldfields and there are also a number of batteries which have been put up on display. But abandoned stamp battery sites throughout the bush in this region typically have no remnants of their machinery or framework. The most you'll generally find are remnants of their wooden foundations, and even these are quite rare to come across considering how many of these machines were once in operation throughout the region. So let's take a closer look at these machines and their foundations. Stamp batteries are machines which crush rock using a pounding action. They consist of a set of heavy stamps which are held vertically within a frame. The individual stamps are lifted by cams on a rotating horizontal shaft, then released as the cam rotates out from under them, causing the stamps to fall within the mortar box and crush the rock inside. This is repeated continually to crush large amounts of gold-bearing rock. Stamp batteries were powered by steam at first, and later they could be powered by gas and electricity. Although stamp batteries were known to be somewhat inefficient, there were many advantages of using these machines for crushing ore. Stamp batteries were economical, generally well understood machines, simple to keep in order, could be operated almost constantly, and could easily be repaired by ordinary blacksmiths. Stamps could be stopped for repairs a few at a time without halting operations, and wearing parts were simple castings to replace. Once erected, a stamp battery would last for years. Stamp batteries were widely used in Victoria during the late 19th and early 20th centuries before being replaced by more efficient crushing methods. Although stamp batteries were once commonplace on the goldfields, most of them were abandoned and dismantled long ago. Many battery sites here consist of nothing more than an indent in the ground where the mortar blocks were once set, and perhaps a loading ramp. And many battery sites were completely flattened, with no trace remaining at all. But there are some sites which have retained part of their foundations. So first, let's take a quick look at what battery foundations look like. This was a great excuse to head over to one of my favourite places, the Ballarat Mechanics Institute Library, to check out the brilliant old ore dressing books they have in their collection, because I know they contain some great illustrations which are perfect for this video. The following diagrams are presented in the 1902 book, Machinery for Metalliferous Mines. Batteries could be set in iron frames like the 20 head stamp battery shown here. Once the battery ceased operation, this iron framework was typically entirely dismantled and reused or melted down, as it was too valuable to abandon at the site. For this reason, you will generally only find remnants of wooden battery foundations out in the bush here today. This diagram shows the makeup of wooden battery framework. In this video, we're going to focus on the lower part of the wooden framework and foundations, which is typically all that survives of battery sites throughout this region, if anything at all. The wooden mortar blocks are shown here, which are long blocks of wood set vertically in the ground upon which the mortar box is set. These wooden blocks help to absorb some of the shock of the machine as it operates. When there is anything remaining of stamp battery foundations out in the bush here, it is usually just the remnants of these wooden mortar blocks. They are sometimes set in concrete like these ones, or sometimes just set directly in the ground. There are not too many sites around which still have these, which is not surprising as they were easily destroyed or deteriorated through fire or general exposure to the weather. Back to the diagram, we can also see the bottom block beneath the mortar blocks, the mud sills, and the cross sills. I've only come across two battery sites in this region, at Costafield and Maliagal, which have remnants of this supporting framework. If you've seen others, please let me know in the comments, I'd love to go check them out. You can get a rough idea of the size of the battery by looking at the mortar blocks. Each set of blocks supported one mortar box, and these would often be set alongside each other. These mortar blocks, although there are a few missing, once supported a 20 head stamp battery with a 5 head stamper set on each set of blocks. This battery would have looked much like this 20 head battery on display at Victoria Hill in Bendigo. Note that there are two 5 head stamp batteries set upon their separate sets of mortar blocks which are supported within the same framework. Another set of 10 stamps is set alongside it in the same way. We can see from the mortar blocks at this site that the battery was configured in the same way as the one at Victoria Hill. You cannot assume the exact size of the battery from the mortar blocks alone, but you will get a rough idea. Each set of mortar blocks supported one mortar box. 
Although five heads of stamps per mortar box is typical, they were also made in sets of four or six. The stamp battery housed within this shed at Tarradale has a four head and a five head battery set alongside one another within the same framework. This battery on display at Blackwood has a set of six stamps. This one on display in Heathkit has two sets of four. There were also smaller stamp batteries with one to three stamps, but their foundations and framework would typically be less substantial. There are several great places where you can go to take a look at surviving foundations for stamp batteries, including at the Spring Gully Mine near Castlemaine, Belgian Reef near Denali, the Great Sandstone Mine at Lanelli, the State Battery at Tarnagulla, and the State Battery at Maliagal. If you're going to check out the State Battery site at Maliagal, I advise that you go well before dusk, as it's currently being guarded by a horde of orb spiders, as I recently found out. The state battery site out at Tarnagulla is just being guarded by thousands of mosquitoes. One of the coolest sites I've checked out for wooden battery foundations is the Jubilee Historic Area over at Staffordshire Reef near Ballarat. The battery site here is very overgrown but it once boasted a 40 head stamp battery. The remnants of the mortar blocks are hiding beneath these ferns all lined up in a long row. There is also a random mortar block lying on the ground nearby. You'll find a similar one lying by itself on the ground over at Molden's extensive North British mine ruins. I'll put some links in the description below of some interesting stamp battery sites you can go check out throughout the Victorian goldfields region. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to see more like this one, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.